week on In Conversation with Center Stage, we spoke to the incredibly talented Zach Gregory. Zach is a singer-songwriter who lives in London. The theatre graduate is now undertaking his master's degree in popular music at BIM. His first album was released in 2017 called Unfinished and he has just launched a podcast called Unsigned. We can't wait to hear what he's got planned and to get chatting to him. Should we get him on? Let's do it. Okay, let's start. <laughs> anyway, so do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Zach Gregory. I'm 22 years old from Rugby. Well, a village near Rugby called Churchover in the Midlands. Um, I'm currently studying an MA at BIM London uh, in popular music practice. Uh, and I'm a singer-songwriter. Um, the f- main genres I'd kind of put myself under are kind of folky, uh, country, um, that kind of thing. But yeah, um, that's 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 pretty much all I can think of. <laughs> that's great. So has music always been something that you've wanted to pursue? Or... Wow, uh, this is actually a really interesting one for me because I've actually not been doing this for that long in like the grand scheme of things. I've probably it's probably I've been doing this since 2015, so like five years. But of course, music's always been a massive part of my life. But I just never thought that I'd be able to do that like I never thought I'd be able to pick up a guitar and play it or write a song for years I was kind of just like oh I love music but I don't think I could ever do it and then something just clicked one day five years ago and then here I am (laughs) Um, (laughs) well that's crazy yeah it's so good though that you've like followed that dream and yeah and you found it yeah 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 um I think I, I, I've been through a lot of kind of phases of, well, I want to do this or I want to do that. And I, for a long time, I was acting and like in theatre and like I, I loved it. But I always had and obviously from five years ago, I had this as like a bit of a, a hobby on the side and I was loving it. And then as time went on, I kind of thought this is what I love doing most. So as that's why I've gone for the MA and like gone full pelt into doing like any project and like it's just I think this is where I'm supposed to be now yeah that's um, so exciting because most people don't really pursue it do they they'll think it in the back of the mind but they just won't actually like get down to it so yeah it's, oh they'll put it off for so long yeah definitely. yeah Spotify bio does mention how you self-taught in guitar did you just like yeah, is that um, how it all started well, I guess it goes back a bit further with the guitar I remember my mum got me a guide to try and teach me the guitar but I was just not interested when I was little I was just like all right yeah and I wasn't really kind of I don't know when I was a kid I wasn't really kind of I I won't do this and then yeah I guess I picked it up again because I've had I always had one in the corner of my room like as a it was just there and then I was like what would happen if I actually tuned it and actually tried to learn this thing um and with help from an old friend um from at the college I was at at the time um yeah it just kind of all clicked into place and then I just thought well he's taught he taught me probably four chords or something he taught me um a song first like that could be two different songs I think it was <laughs> bear with me Wonderwall uh but with Boulevard it was as Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day as I learned it but then I realized later that you could play Wonderwall with the same chords and I was like okay these are cool and then I just went on from there because from that the shapes that they form I was kind of and then from then I've just been teaching myself. I'm still teaching myself, to be honest. Um, still this, this to this day, I'm learning. I love that. So, yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about, you said you studied theatre, was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, okay, well, it's, I've been kind of doing theatre um, since I was little again. Um, I was in like little pantomimes in the village I'm, I live in uh, since I was little. And then I, I've got kind of family and family friends who are all in the industry at different levels. And it was like always something that was around me. And so I was like, oh, I want to do that. And uh, so I went to college and did performing arts and I was into musicals, into plays uh, there. And then I did some independent stuff like Shakespeare. I've done quite a lot of Shakespeare, which is, is fun, actually. Um, and then, yeah, I went to university in London. Uh, goldsmiths and studied drama and theatre and and it's horrible to say but that's when I kind of realized it wasn't for me but um I I still love it and I still like really appreciate it and maybe one day I'll get back into it but yeah it's just been my lifelong thing really that 
I went for and then realized oh actually you know it's music at least it all kind of links in though I'm sure like stuff that you've learned drawing that will really help with like your music career yeah I mean fingers crossed that yeah. I've actually remembered everything and <laughs> whatever but yeah so you're doing a master's now in popular music what does yeah. that entail I was so curious about that yeah I like, was so shocked it's a master's it's crazy yeah so it's actually quite a recent thing I think that BIM have done um I don't know if all the BIM campuses have done it but in London uh so yeah the course is called popular music practice and it's basically everything um and it's really hard to explain in like a really kind of condensed way I guess it's funny for me because when I went into it I was like well the music I do isn't exactly I mean what people perceive to be popular you know it's not in the charts or whatever so but I guess it's just kind of honing and honing your skills in terms of like editing and kind of recording yourself and that's why I've kind of been able to do what I've done for the my next release um and just helping with writing like it's really hard to explain because it's literally everything yeah. just rolled into a course and they're trying to you know push us to do different things it's fun um but obviously with this whole uh pandemic it's been really bumpy because uh, I was supposed to be finished by now but I suspended it thinking oh it'll be over and then I'm still kind of online with it so it's a shame but it's good the course is good but a lot to kind of try and explain and I'm rubbish with explaining <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, it sounds interesting. It just sounds like you've got everything involved in it that you need, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, pretty much. So who would you say that your musical influences are? Okay, uh, there's a lot. Um, it's okay. funny because I was I was thinking about, because I watched a couple of your videos with the other guys and I was when this question came up, I was like, oh God, how am I going to answer this? Because <laughs> on my uh, BBC Introducing profile, it's there's a bit where it's like influences. And it's like a lot of people have just like, one or two or three. I'm sure there's people like, like me, but I I filled the box and then had to put etc at the bottom because oh, no. like, I can't really. I think I take a lot of influences from people, but to give you maybe a few main ones, uh, Newton Faulkner uh, is a massive influence to me. Like I've been I, I've been listening to him since he brought his first album out in 2007, since I was a kid, and I've just grown up with him. And then him as an artist is just is inspirational, really, um, and that's. He's the kind of main one that if you ask me, I'd say him. But then there's a guy called Ruri Joseph, who's in a band called William the Conqueror. And William the Conqueror are only quite recent, but their stuff actually, um, if you, I guess it's it's weird, but if you listen to like some of their songs, a lot of my friends have gone, is that you? I'm like, no, it's not me, but th like <laughs> their, their music I'd say is good. And John Mayer, John Mayer as well is probably my top three, but um, yeah, well, there's so that. many. <laughs> <laughs> that's really interesting though they're really good people to be influenced by I guess um so how else do you describe your sound other than folk would you say that is the overall sound or I don't know because you if you go back on my Spotify uh, to listen to my first album I've got to be honest I cringe a bit now <laughs> because I was so different back then and those songs were written when I was god 15 16 17 whatever and like I think I was just so different back then and obviously quite naive, very inexperienced. And I'm proud of the album because like some of the sounds are good, but like in comparison to the stuff that I'm like the, the kind of identity I've found now is so different. So going back to that, you'd probably, I wouldn't know what to label that album as. Uh, and then in terms of myself, I'd say folk and there's a little country influence in there because that's like my guilty pleasure. Um, but yeah, a singer songwriter is kind of always the way I spin it but that doesn't really explain anything but apparently it's a genre so I'd say that I'd say that just to be vague and annoying for you <laughs> basically everyone has to go check it out if they want to know what yeah you sound like. I like it <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 do that <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting though like I never thought of that imagine like you're like listening back to an album from like years ago you would cringe wouldn't you because like you oh yeah and they are quite personal albums as well yeah they are they're like a, your own story aren't they yeah yeah so recently i changed distributors and on the new one you can actually do, put the lyrics in so I thought, oh, i'll be fun like i'll do that because then on instagram when you post them the whole lyric thing comes up i was like oh, that'd be fancy um so i did it with my old album and i'll tell you what it was probably the most painful 40 minutes of my life like some of the lyrics that come up i'm thinking why the oh it's so cringy like <laughs> 
I um, get it. I get it. I was heartbroken, but please just like tone it down a little bit. Um, it's yeah, like it, when you have an old status that comes up, you know, like an old Facebook status or something that pops oh, up. It's like, exactly what? like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's good. Um, and I guess, yeah, go listen to it and then laugh for yourselves, I guess. <laughs> That's what I'd say. <laughs> so are you planning on having any other albums? Are you going to write another album or what are your plans? So I've got a lot of things in the pipeline at the moment in terms of music. Uh, so as, a, as you know, the single, I've got a single coming out on the 4th of December um, that's going to be ultimately an EP, like a demo version EP um, from that I wrote and recorded in lockdown right here. And that's kind of my next thing. Um, it's like a demo version um, because of my limited resources basically in at home. Um, but the, the song and the EP that will ultimately come from it um, are all kind of based around my, uh, my struggles and thoughts of mental health um, that I've had. And it's just, it's me opening up basically. Um, so it's, it means a lot to me, but um, yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to like finally get stuff like that out there. Yeah, that sounds That's exciting. Amazing. At least like this time you've used valuably to you know, yeah. write a song. And I think like yeah, yeah. mental health will help a lot of people because mm -hmm. so many people are struggling with that right now, especially. Yeah. So it's a really nice way of you to to help, I guess, and yeah, definitely. make people feel less alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, hopefully the song kind of people can connect to it and like either be comforted by it or you know yeah. if it's just relatable, you know, like that would be nice. Um, but that's the aim. So, yeah. and then there's an album coming and maybe another. Oh, I'm rubbish at this. A EP demo version and then that same ep i'm actually going to redo it with a friend of mine who's a producer and we're going to make it bigger basically um and like do it properly um not that i've not done it well i'd like to think that i have but um <laughs> do it again and re-release it but then there is an album yeah uh, but i've got it's all ready and written but it's just kind of like yeah it's not it's not it's not there yet that's what i'll say yeah, but yeah there's a lot of stuff no, it's exciting. Like it, definitely. Yeah, I'm excited to see it all come out. Yeah, me too. Um, so you write your own songs, I'm guessing. Yes. So I what know. is the process of that? Because everyone we talk to has a completely different process, but as non-white songwriters, I want to know how, how you, you do it. Inspired, like, I don't know. Okay, well, I'm going to try my best for you then. Um, <laughs> but this might be quite difficult because <laughs> it is quite hard to explain. But with me, there's a, I always say there's kind of, three things that happen when I'm writing a song. The first one will, I'll have a chord progression on the guitar and I'll be like, this sounds nice. And then I'll put lyrics to it if I can think of them, which normally kind of, I guess my influences always come from what's happening around me or to me or whatever. Um, it's always kind of um, the world around me. So there's some songs that I write that are, I see a new, like something on the news, I'm pointing at the TV, you can't see it. <laughs> There's something on the news um, and it's like, because I've written a couple of songs now. So United on my first album was written after Paris Attacks. And I literally wrote that 10 minutes after I heard about it. I was so like angry and, and like emotional and I was just wanted to do something. Um, so that's one. And then my most recent single, Generation Z, was the same thing. Uh, all the climate marches in uh, all over the world. Um, I think was it last year I mean they're happening all the time but uh, there, there was a like a lot of news coverage on them and yeah I wrote a song kind of about that and then more recently during lockdown in with the Black Lives Matter movement I did write a song called No Justice No Peace which I did a video of on Instagram uh, but I've not done it I'm not I don't think I'll do anything with it it was just more of a passive protest thing for the time and I guess that's some that's sometimes how I write and then the other times it's like the chord progression thing or I get a lyric and I'm like oh uh, okay and then I'll pick up the guitar and spend hours and hours trying to come up with a chord progression so that um, but the other way the the thing I think the main way I'd say that I I'm inspired and I write is just pure emotion and passion at the time like if something's happening to me or in the world then I'm normally able to kind of I something comes over me I guess it sounds really like cliche but something comes over me and I it comes to me but how I write is it's always so different and I guess as you said with every artist everyone's different as well so it's really it's really a tough one actually now I'm rambling for a while so, <laughs> so it's really interesting though because I would always think like say you had to sit down and write an album like my brain would just go dead <laughs> do you know what I mean 
I don't know if it yeah. was when I'm out, I'd have to like drop stuff down, do you know, when you're yeah. like seeing stuff that inspire, yeah. But I think it's a lucky way yeah. that like you can express all the feelings as well. Cause like for people who aren't as creative and it's trapped inside. Yeah. So it's mm. all out, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really a good outlet for like getting things off your chest, really. Um not even even if it's just if it, if it's not even about you, even if like you've seen a friend is I don't know if a friend is going through something you want to send a message to them then I always find it easiest to like jot a few words down and try and write a song but it just I mean uh, there's so many songs that I've got like that that will never ever reach the surface of anything they were just little kind of things that I did at time but yeah I think it's purely em like emotional the way I write just like I guess that's the way I'd say that's quite interesting actually I've never really thought about that before <laughs> <laughs> I like it. If, so if you could collab with anyone, who would it be? I wonder if it's going to be as long as your influence list. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> it probably is. Uh I'm gonna try I'm gonna really try and uh collab. I'd love to collab with Newton Faulkner. Like I think that would be just a dream. Um like it's funny actually, I got a story about that. I met him in Paris at a gig like probably two years ago. Um, and he, we were talking and I, I cheekily took, and now this is, as I've just said to you, how cringed out I was by my first album. That's the only physical thing I had to give to him. So I gave it to him and said, oh, listen to it if you want. Pretty sure he left it in the venue. Oh, um, no. probably, probably forgot about it, but I gave it to him and it was very nice of him to take it. But I don't, I, I have no idea whether he would have listened to it. Uh, but yeah, Newton Faulkner, definitely. Uh, I think... This, the way he plays the guitar and writes his own songs, I think we'd definitely be able to mm -hmm. create something. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Cool. So obviously it's been a while since live gigs, but yeah. let's reminisce a little bit. What is the best gig that you've ever done? Ooh, the best, best gig I've ever done. And like, where was it? Why was it so good? You know, tell us all the deets. <laughs> the thing with me is like, gigs wise, I've been really rubbish. Like I'm, I try, but I guess for a long time, my confidence in terms of performance wasn't there. Um, so I struggled getting on stage, but I did a kind of farewell show when I was going to uni, just up the road, this little village hall and everyone came like friends, family and stuff. I think I'd say that just because it was so like nice. And I think, I think just purely because of how kind of nice it was, I think that was probably it. Yeah. But in terms of, there's been some stuff in, I've done in London that's been really, really cool. Just kind of like I've stood up a couple of, I, I mainly do open mics to be honest. I've never really had a full on gig in London. So I, there's a few open mics, but that's probably all I've got. But yeah, that farewell gig, I think I'd say, uh, just because it was nice and yeah, lovely. <laughs> it's a nice gig. Is it something that you want to do more of then, like doing live gigs or be more like the songwriting you're into or? Well, uh, yeah, I, honestly, I'd, I'd love to do more kind of live stuff. Like I've finally got the confidence up and like fully, and I know now that I'd really be up for it. And then obviously now we can't. So it's like, oh, okay, oh, well, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll wait a bit longer, but yeah, I'm desperate to. And I mean, there's so many places all over the country that you can do, do like open mics and, but yeah, gigs wise, like I'd love to get proper gigs. Um, London, I definitely want to go back and do some proper stuff. But yeah, definitely, definitely. But the songwriting is really important to me. And like, I'm getting into that writing for myself, but I'd love to write for other people or with other people too sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, live is definitely something I want to do more of. Have you um, done much live streaming during this lockdown weird time of the world? Um, I'd say that I've done more, I've not really done live stream. I think I did one live stream. Um, I, I can remember it. It was um, one live stream I did on Facebook, I think. Um, and that was it. But I've more more done kind of pre-recorded things. Um, so I did, uh, like for a stage I was doing loads of covers where I got people and my followers to choose. Mm -hmm. um and i got i used to laugh because it was like i'd put it up and i'd be like 
three votes each or something like that. Great. Right. <laughs> but then I'd go, ah. and I'd just say to my sister, can you just like swing the vote one way and then <laughs> we can just get on with it. Um, yeah. Um, so that, I did a lot of that stuff, like covers. And then I started doing some original stuff because that's what I'm really like, passionate about. So I started doing that. And yeah, so it's more pre-recorded stuff, but mm. I kind of tried to keep it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So you mentioned that you used to be a bit nervous, like doing live gigs. But how have you really managed to get past that? Because it could be useful, you know, for other musicians who are starting out that might be a bit nervous. Um, well, I'd always say that I was quite a shy person for a long time. And it was only really when I kind of, I think I'd say really when I went to London to uni and then that I really started to kind of come out of my shell a lot more. Um, I think if I had to give advice, I'm not very, I'm not the one to come to, but I think I'd say just doing it is probably the best remedy. Like I remember that when I kind of got out on stage and just started, I was a lot more comfortable. Like, and as that's gone on, every time I go on a stage now, I'll be, I think I was nervous beforehand, but once you just get going, it's like, oh, I'm here now and I can't really, I can't leave. Well, you can, but that would look a bit weird. <laughs> yeah. Um but no, I think just, you know, trying to do it, like just get yourself out there and hopefully like your, your like music will do the rest. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when, I think the best moment is, and I've got to say uh, for anyone that is similar to me, when you get that first applause after that first song or that first applause after the whole gig, it's like, so it's like one of the best things ever because you're like, oh my God, I've got through it. Like I've done it and then I can carry on or yeah. It, it's really nice that moment and that'll really push you on to do more mm -hmm. I always feel like you build it up so much more in your head too and it's like when you actually start and you're still there it's not half as bad as what you know you pictured it yeah 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 that definitely experience too it'll get easier yeah I do think that it, that will help a lot of people because it is such a nerve-wracking yeah. thing and like, mm, like that yeah. is fulfilling when you do get that applause that you kind of forget about all the nervous yeah definitely Definitely. So, if you could headline any festival, which one would it be, and why? Okay. See, so I watched <laughs> I watched a few of your episodes, and everyone was kind of like different. Well, no, they weren't. A lot of them said Glastonbury. And yeah. I was like, okay. Okay, Glastonbury. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, of course, I'd love to do it, but I wanted to. I wanted to come to you with a bit of a different answer. So I've done some thinking oh. about. I've kind of stayed in the UK because I. The, I know there's festivals all over the world, but I've stayed in the UK. And it's a bit of a weird one. I'm not sure if it is a weird one. Uh, I'd say Boardmasters, just because I love Cornwall. And it's, it's in Cornwall. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the artists I like have done it. Um, mm -hmm. It's in Cornwall, as I keep saying. I love Cornwall. <laughs> I think it's such a nice area. Like, imagine doing that in the summer and it's like really nice weather. And like, yeah, I, I think that's definitely the one I'd say actually and I'm I'm happy with that because that's yep. not Glastonbury and it's different so <laughs> different yeah. yeah I'm gonna have to have a little bit of research on this festival yes um yeah but that'd be cool like if it's I don't know like surfing watching a festival <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you surf I'll watch the festival at the same time really <laughs> but... <laughs> well you never know <laughs> oh dear I think it's called Boardmasters well it might be I yeah. think it's that that's its <laughs> name <laughs> The one yeah. in Cornwall, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just look for that. I think that's the one I'd do. <laughs> so we touched on before some advice that you'd give to other musicians, but have you ever been given any advice yourself that's really helped you with a new career that you could share with us? A plenty, actually. Um, I was going to try and joke with you, but it wouldn't have made sense. Someone, a family friend actually said to me once, cheer up. Um, <laughs> Great, <laughs> Great advice. advice. And I guess, I guess it's viable, like, and I've tried to, but then not really. I guess I'm just kind of at peace with the fact that a lot of my songs are going to be quite sad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a bit of a joking one. But uh, yeah, I've been given lots of advice. And I think the best one I've, I've ever been given is just, it's so, so like typical, but it's just don't give up. Like, because I know for a fact that my voice isn't one of like, it's not the best voice in the world. I'm very aware, but I know it can, you know, the songs are right, it works with and whatever. But yeah, there was a lot of time when I was thinking, well, you know, are people are gonna to wanna to listen to this? Like, basically, um, but someone said to me, it doesn't matter, you know, just carry on, just like pursue it. And the main thing is that following on from that, they kind of said, this is for you ultimately, like, 
as much as we want people to enjoy the music and like connect with it, and that's the best thing ever. This is what ultimately you know I want to be doing. So why not carry on and just keep pushing? And that's the best advice I was given. Just don't give up. Right. Um, yeah, that's it. Very cheesy, but that was it. It's nice though. I like that one. <clears throat> Me too. It's true. Just keep going. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes. Stop. Keep pushing through. <laughs> yeah. So what are your goals for the next five years and where do you see yourself? Yeah. Oh, goals. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, there's a few things I'd like to have done in five years. Um, one of them is support someone on tour. Like I definitely like that. I know it's not a very high bar, actually. I think it's doable. Like just to support someone on tour, it doesn't matter who they are. Um, as well, they have obviously be similar to me otherwise that's going to be a bit of a strange one uh but yeah supporting someone on tour is definitely one um keep making music um you know just hopefully get more people listening to me and you know people connecting to the stuff i write and writing songs for other people yeah there's a few things that i'd like to have done in five years um yeah uh <laughs> that's all i can think of really but... the cornwall festival <laughs> Well, there you go. That's one to add to the list. I'll, uh, I'll try and, I'll try and get in the back door or something. <laughs> no, it'll sound super exciting though. And like we said earlier, we're really excited to see where you progress into and where you go with it all. Yeah. So we've heard that you've got a new podcast coming out. Do you want to tell us a yep. little about that? Cool. So I've started a podcast called the unsigned podcast uh first episode first and second episode are actually out now uh they're every two weeks on a sunday okay. hopefully if i can keep getting guests um and basically yeah i've just started it to kind of I'm, as an unsigned artist myself i know that as, as i know we've got bbc introducing but there's a lot of not a lot of coverage really uh there was a local station near me that did something but then they got uh shut down so I was like, well, I want to try and give a platform to other unsigned artists from all over, whoever, whatever genre, whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've started it and the first two episodes are out. Um, it's really fun. So I talk to them a bit about them and get to know them, hear some stories and what they do. And they play me, they do three of their original songs on the episodes. It's a nice chilled out thing. So yeah, uh, go and uh, check it out if you can. That'd be really nice. Oh, how exciting. We'll put the link in the bio so then everyone can check it out. Yeah. And we'll give it a listen to too. It's a really good idea. Like, I think it's really exciting. Thank you. Next up, we've got an exclusive premiere of Zach's new song. I'm so excited. I love it. Me too. Can't wait. Yeah. Are you going to do your excited dance? (laughs) Um, So this song is called Do You See Me Now? And we hope you all enjoy it as much as we do. Mm Mm-hmm. Some days I feel like a snake in the grass Not going anywhere fast Just biding my time Most days I can't get out of bed There's this weight on my chest Holding me down Do you see me now? Do you see me now? For who I am Some say it's all in your head I mean they would be correct Technically Get outside, it'll clear your mind Just look up to the sky And breathe Do you see me now? For who I am For who 
I am For who I am Orange horizon Serene and silent Orange horizon Serene and silent I want to be there I want to be there Do you see me now? So that's all the main questions. So it's been really good getting to know you that little bit more. We'll move yeah. to the fun round now, which we're fun. just going to throw some questions at you, just answer really quickly. And okay. yeah, let's see how that one goes. Let's hope I don't ramble here then. <laughs> you want to kick it off <laughs> Okay, so what's your favourite band? Uh, William the Conqueror. That's it. I said them earlier. William the Conqueror. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh my god. <laughs> Read minds, but in not in a weird way. It would be like oh no. To try and get ideas from other people. Like I'd just like sit in a cafe where like one of my favorite artists is and just kind of if they're writing a song and then steal it, run <laughs> off, record it, get it out there, then <laughs> then I've written a top song and it's like, hang on. But yeah, no, that, that's silly. No, that's a very silly one. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really bad now because I saw someone in another episode say something about healing and like, the whole thing. That, I now I feel silly now. I feel really silly. Anyway, I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with it. Yeah, but I mean, Leeds had like a good meaning behind it. Like we just your ideas. <laughs> it is smart. It is smart. It's not. It's, it's it's smart, but it's not the nicest thing to do, is it? Like people would not be happy. We'll try not. To <laughs> <with me. laughs> so, what's your favorite movie? Movie. Oh God. Oh God! There's what? Oh, what is it? Oh, I'm just gonna go. I, I love the Lord of the Rings. I'm gonna say the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Okay. Just okay. yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think too. Far. Yeah, yeah, I did. I do love it. I just that's there was another film that I tried. I couldn't think of its name. I couldn't think of it. Okay. Damn. Maybe it'll come to you. So, um, starter or dessert? Like if you could only have one. Oh, if I could only have one starter or dessert. Dessert? Yeah. yeah. Would you rather go deep sea diving or bungee jumping? Bungee jumping for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's your most useless talent? <laughs> like you always that question. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I feel like you do not useless. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's useless. Okay. Most you, useless talent. If we said talent, you just be like, oh, I'm right, nothing right there. No, but useless one. I know because that's what I mean if you just said talent. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, um, oh, like, oh God. Like, can you do any, like, party tricks? Any party tricks? No, I'm, I'm pretty boring, actually. Touch your nose with your tongue. <laughs> I, I, I don't think, I haven't tried, I don't want to, no, I think my useless <laughs> This is horrible. I'm really scared. I, I don't know. Pass. We'll pass. We'll pass that because okay. I have no idea. <laughs> that was a new one. You could put back with that one. <laughs> Would you rather go back in the past or see into the future? Mm, go back in the past, I think. Yeah, that's an easy one. Mm -hmm. Pasta or pizza? Pasta. What's your best joke? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm about. I'm about my one-liners. 
um, my like, dad jokes. So bear with it. If you don't laugh, that's okay. Um, Velcro, what a rip off. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I do quite like that one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 We'll take that's it. my go-to that's my go-to <laughs> i couldn't even think of any jokes i'll put on the spotlight i couldn't even tell you one joke no you'll be the tomato thing yeah. it goes that's on a long time though, isn't it we should know more jokes yeah anyway night out or night in night in at the moment obviously but yeah night in anyway <laughs> like, <laughs> <what else? laughs> if you could be a star in a movie what movie would it be like the character star. If you could star in a movie. Oh, sorry, let me repeat that. If you okay. could star in a movie, not be a star. <laughs> if you could star in a movie, what movie would it be? What well, so a movie that's already out, okay. Yeah. Oh, God almighty, what the movies are getting me today. Um oh. oh. Easy. I'd probably say uh, there's this film called Rudderless. Okay. Which is like a bit of an original music film. I guess I'd just, I'd be in that because I'd be still be doing what I'm trying to do now yeah. in a movie. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that was easy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was my go. Beer or wine? Beer. Are you a night or a morning person? It's a really tough question to answer right now because oh, I'm rambling. Never mind. I started night shift recently at the local supermarket, so it's really I I couldn't say. I think I'm an all time, but like I'm up all the time or asleep okay. all the time. An yeah, all rounder. An all rounder right now, yeah. Yeah, perfect. And that's a wrap. Thanks so much. That's our thank you. Round finish with. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you so much for joining us today and it's been really okay. good to know you that little bit more yeah yeah thank you and i really love what you guys are doing so thank oh you. thank Keep you doing it yeah it's really nice it's really nice so thanks so much thank for all your support and everything <laughs> Thank you for watching In Conversation with Front of Stage. We've been speaking to Zach Gregory. And we've been your hosts. I'm Sammy and this is Becky.